Once I lost so badly in my fantasy football league that I had to eat an entire can of dog food covered in wasabi. It was unpleasant. But now I found the fantasy footballer's element draft kit. The days of dog food are gone as I dig into their breakouts, values, tiered rankings, and much more. If you want to join me in the winner's circle where you don't have to paint your butt cheeks like an elephant's face, head over to www.alimentdraftkit.com and prepare for your fancy draft. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Tuesday, July 30th. Mike Wright. Chillo. Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. No, you didn't get to talk. Yeah, no, he went right. He wasn't gonna let another. <laughs> he heard me chillo, and he's like, "We're we're yeah. past this. <laughs> Shut it down." You already made me endure that incredible introduction. That's me. <laughs> I don't know why you two. <laughs> I love it. Love funny. it so much. It, oh, it is funny, and I'm sure that the YouTube comments right now are saying how funny it is yeah. and realistic. Oh, it's well. I mean, it's our good friend Chris. <laughs> yeah. We are happy to have you with us. This is the final July people episode of the was, show. People know it was not AI. <laughs> right. Yes. AI could do way better. <laughs> um, that's, that's true. Uh, we are here. We are excited to be with you. We have a uh, a lot to talk about. News. Players getting paid some money. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have our- Some people not getting money. <laughs> We have Everybody our- gets money unless you're a cowboy. If you're a cowboy, no money for you. It's weird. It's weird, and we'll talk about it. We have our first Hungry for More segment on today's show of the year, so that'll be our quick question of the day. And, yeah, final July show, which means five days a week, starting August 1st. Yes. Which means football is football Very, is here. I believe uh- – Hall of Fame game. Isn't Hall of Fame game this week? Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> not, not that anybody plays no. or watches it. Yeah, but it's football. It's the but symbolic it's start. But that 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 means two weeks from now is preseason. That is true. So, you, you know, we're going to have a bunch of questions we answer on today's show, try to help you win your league. But, Jason, I am curious now that we're going into this new season, as someone that had to be in the presence of two champions mm-hmm. for the entire summer, like, what is the kind of mental uh, hurdles you've had to overcome? How do you prepare for a season of us being the champion through the whole year? And then, like, what adjustments have you had to make? Because I know there's a lot of people out there that are that might be more like you and didn't didn't win it. Didn't this win year. a championship yeah. this last year. Yeah, I mean, it, it is tough, but I am a man of the people, and everyone knows that only one person wins in your league. And I think what you do if you are in my position is you just look at history and you say, "Well, <laughs> well, self." Did you win a championship in one of our main three leagues in 10 consecutive years? And then you're like, okay, yeah, I'm fine. Thank you, Andy, for, kind for of, bringing that up. Kind of backfired a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. But Sounds I was like a some real hindsight life. analysis going on over here. Uh, we have a live show at the end of August in Los Angeles. That is Saturday, August 24th at the Palace Theater. You can go to ballerslive.com for tickets. We have the ultimate draft kit available right now, and uh, you don't need to wait any longer. August is uh, here. almost here, and it's time to get ready for your draft. And I'm excited. We're we're doing our league of Ref- record draft right before the kickoff of the first game, which I realized. See, I have a new co-manager in in this league in mm-hmm. league of record, and it is my son. My son is my co-manager for the first time. Mm-hmm. Then I realized I'm going to have to make him. He's going to have to miss school. 
Oh, wow. He's going to have to miss school to come to our League of Record draft because we decided to do it. Dude, priorities. Good yeah. father. I mean, yeah. like it is. He is going to miss school. I mean, it is. Yeah, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. School can kick rocks. Am I right? Yeah, man. I don't go to school. <laughs> Neither does he. Did you get the uh, waiver signed for the 18-plus uh, draft party? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, no. What you're going to say is the waiver from a – he's going to find a dentist to be like – I oh, need, that's you what need I, to cover for me. I, that's why I thought you meant too that I would tell the school he's got a dental appointment and then a doctor and then something uh, yeah, else an covered. Ortho. Um, the ultimate draft kit available at ultimatedraftkit.com. You can get the UDK or the UDK plus. Anything else going on? You guys want to talk about? I'm I mean, I'm I'm famished. All right. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. All right, we are back into Hungry for More. So it's the off season. Training camp has started. This is the time of extrapolating big things from little videos. <laughs> yeah. And... Um, we all have something that we have observed or paid attention to that we are hungry for a little more of. I guess I will toss it over to Jason to start this segment. What are you hungry for more? Yeah, I am hungry for more of Joe Burrow. I want to see a the healthy, haircut. The haircut? Not the haircut. Not, not Eminem. Oh, Halloween outfit, guys. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're all clamoring to see who gets to claim uh, Eminem version of Joe Burrow. You know who's stuck with that. Yeah, that's the one who's willing to shave and able to shave. That's you. Um, but Joe Burrow is someone that, like, even when, when we were preparing for this segment, uh, Kyle, our editor, was like, you know, he was he was besmirching them. He was calling them their, their backup quarterback and talking about some stupid stats from last year about, you know, how he, you know, he was not even as good as Jake Browning. Joe Burrow is an unbelievable top five quarterback in the NFL when healthy. And I am hungry to see that for fantasy purposes, not only for Joe Burrow, who is an absolute steal of a value right now if he's healthy, but also for Jamar Chase, for T. Higgins. You've got an offense here um, that is really, really important for fantasy football, and we are forgetting how good Joe Burrow is. We talk all the time about how hard it is to be a pocket passer. And if you're a pocket passer, we've talked about it a lot with C.J. Stroud. You have benchmarks you have to hit to be valuable in fantasy football. You have to hit. You have to throw for four thousand yards. If you're throwing for thirty five hundred yards, it doesn't work. If you're a pocket passer, you have to throw for near thirty five plus touchdowns. If you're not doing both of those things at the same time, you're not going to be a consistent weekly asset. And certainly, if you're being drafted highly, you must crush those numbers. But Joe Burrow has. You know, it's like. What's the best way to know someone can do it in the future? Well, they've done it in the past. And we forget because last year was a train wreck. Last week, last year, he, he started camp with the calf injury and was injured and, and then had the worst start imaginable in those first four weeks. He threw two total passing touchdowns. He was dead last in yards per pass attempt, dead last, dead last in completion percentage as he was working his way back. Once he was healthy, the next five games before the thumb injury and in five games, 12 touchdowns, the number one completion rate. You're like, oh, yeah, that's Joe Burrow, unfortunately got injured. But look at the previous two seasons, the two seasons that are so easy to forget, even though they were, they were just one injured season away where he was the quarterback eight and the quarterback four. He threw for 4,600 yards and 34 touchdowns. Those are the numbers we need two years ago. Then or three years ago, two years ago, was 4,475 yards and 35 passing touchdowns. Oh, and he added 250 and five on the ground when he was the quarterback four. This is a really, really talented quarterback that we pretty much haven't seen in a year. Last year was deleted. Maybe last we lost our appetite. Right. That is that is why I made him my hungry for more, because I think people have lost their appetite for Joe Burrow. It is reflected in his average draft price. You look at 2022, he was, on average, the 46th player taken. 2023, last season, he was the 32nd player off the board. Major bust of a season. Right now, he's the 63rd player. You, you do not. Are you targeting him? I am. He is He is one of the few. And I mean, I still prefer a mobile quarterback. So, like, my main targets go Anthony Richardson, Kyler Murray, Jaden Daniels. But of all the other quarterbacks out there, if I'm 
deleting the 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 mobile rushing quarterbacks. He is the best of the pocket passer for the value, the spot, what he's done in the past, the weapons he has, and I'm I'm hungry for more Joe Burrow. Speaking of uh, losing our appetites, Mike has the Broncos backfield. Yes. <laughs> And yeah. I thought I was hungry for less of that backfield. Oh. So tell me why you're hungry for more of the Broncos. So, uh, I guess you would call it like what, like a a sample platter that they have going on yeah, in the backfield? Yeah, you're, you're pretty much emaciated from last year. So, yeah. It's just the the camp battle that is going on right now is so fascinating because there are really, really large fantasy repercussions from what happens here. Uh, like they, we've talked about uh, of all these guys in the off season. We're hearing more and more about each player. We're talking Javante Williams, Audric Estime Lauder, Jaleel McLaughlin, yes. and Samaje P. Ryan is is still on the team. And we saw, or, or we've heard, you know, before training camp started, it was maybe Javante and Samaje P. Ryan are battling for one spot. It sounds like McLaughlin and Audric Estime are locked into the roster. And like the range of what can happen here of, of Javante would be wild if he's cut, but people are talking about it, all the way to, no, he's the starter for, for a Sean Payton offense. And let me just read you some of the quotes. So the quote uh, about Javante here, he's lost weight, he looks trim, and this is the coach talking about him. I thought he looked sharp today, he looked much different, his weight's down, and I'm proud of him. Look, running backs, losing weight, often turns into success for fantasy football. But then talking about Estime, who he what needs like, to lose weight. <laughs> is that what you're saying? <laughs> Which dude, Guilty as charged. Remember, Estime is a day three pick. But he said when the draft started, every once in a while there's a player you'd say, when this thing's all over, I'd love to have this player. And, and fortunately, we were able to get this player. He's talking about Audric Estime. And then talking about McLaughlin, it's the he's here at five or at five fifteen in the morning. First one in, last one out, you know, like really uh, commending his work ethic. And I'm bringing all this up because the history of Sean Payton with running backs, while last year didn't turn into a real focused uh, fantasy production for us, Javante was running back 30 on the year, but he had 47 receptions. Meanwhile, Samaj P. Ryan had 50 <laughs> receptions. I mean, just the two of those guys combined, like if we can get – 75% of that if Javante ends up being the main running back and he's healthy, but looking over the course of what Sean Payton has done, not just with Alvin Kamara, but in running back fantasy points, the group, their total fantasy points, it's always incredible. And last year, when it was felt bad, it was still the 10th most points for the running back position, even though it wasn't really usable. So it's just figuring out what is happening here because if Javante is actually back, and and closer to the draft prospect that he was and not the guy we saw in the field last year, then you are getting an absolute steal at the running back 30. I don't know if that's the case of what will happen. And then should Javante Williams, they move on from him, all of a sudden Audrick Estime to me is very interesting because he'll be the first and second down guy, the goal line guy. So there's just there is real value here, and it's just it. this is like reality TV to me, what's happening with these three Bron uh, Bronco running backs. And I, I love it. I can't get enough of the information about it. All right. I will go with uh, an athletic, an athletically gifted rookie in Xavier Ligat of the Carolina Panthers. I am hungry to I, see more. I saw a, uh, saw a little highlight of him doing an out route. Yeah. I, I am so excited. <laughs> terribly thrown ball that he had to die for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that happens uh, in Carolina, but. Xavier Legat, the storyline that Jason has brought up with him, rookie wide receiver in Carolina, desperately in need of explosive weapons. Uh, the story has been you saw so little of the top tier Xavier Legat in college. He was right. one of the the latest breakout aged first round wide receivers that we have ever seen over the last decade. When we say breakout age, we mean when did he have twenty plus percent of the college team's receiving yards percentage and then the team's receiving touchdowns. He had one big year in South Carolina. And uh, Brett Coleman had this thread talking about some of the things that Xavier Leggett was up against throughout his adolescence, yes. uh, whether it was losing both of his parents, whether it was starting college and then COVID hits and your development stops, whether it was you started as a wide receiver in high school 
and then your head coach decides instead of developing you as a wide receiver, we're just going to make you our quarterback and have you run for 1,800 yards as a quarterback in high school so that you don't develop as a wide receiver. He was late to that party when it came to developing the route tree and the opportunities. You saw a little bit of him in the receiver documentary with with, uh, Debo Samuel, who comes from South Carolina as well and kind of brought Liga under his wing. This is a... I think a an absolutely athletically overwhelming talent in Carolina. And it would be easy to say, well, he went to a place that didn't produce a lot on offense last year, but I have a lot of confidence in Dave Canales and putting people in the right position on this team and giving Bryce Young the best opportunity. And this was a team where we did see, we saw production that helped your fantasy team from an over-the-hill Adam Thielen what? for the first half of the year. And Xavier Liget is so talented, he's so large, he's so fast, I trust Dave Canales to put him into a good position to succeed. And he talks about it. Like, we have quotes from Dave Canales. You talk about being hungry for more. Out of the backfield, jet sweeps, short crosses, perimeter screens, down the field, posts. He said, quote, there really isn't much else we do with receivers. He has done it all. He has a massive receiver with explosive ability. He can make things happen. And more and more of these superlatives around Xavier Liget. Yeah, the the crazy thing is, so uh, Xavier Leggett was a, a, a guy, I mean, I fell in love with his tape. Uh, I told people in the rookie draft season, his profile is one that you want to bet against for sure. I'm betting on him. Don't follow me, but I believe in him. So I believe in Leggett. I believe in Deontay Johnson as a really good NFL wide receiver. He's going to get open, going to catch the ball really good. I believe in Canales. I think he's a, a good offensive mind. He's done good things the last several years with different quarterbacks, and I don't believe in Bryce Young. So it's like those – they can't all – something is going to give. And so I just – I don't want to find out which one it is. Is that is that your way of saying, like, if, if Deontay Johnson and Canales and Lee Gett have success, then yes. by extension you're wrong about Bryce Young? Exactly correct. That is what I'm saying. All right, that was Hungry for More presented by Uber Eats. Get almost, almost anything for game day delivered with Uber Eats, official on-demand food delivery partner of the NFL. Order now. News and notes from around the league. There's a specific drop that I think we need to hit here. Do you have the money drop? Can you find that for me? Well, the weekend was busy. Tua Tunga Vailoa, four year, $212 million contract extension. The Packers signed Jordan Love to a four year, $220 million extension. Jordan Love is now the highest paid quarterback in the history of the NFL. That's insane. <laughs> He's had one season, which was a great season. And maybe he uh, proved everything that you needed to see. Obviously, he did to the Packers, but that is also. That's a tough pill to swallow to go from you've been a backup, you weren't ready, we're going to give you a, a contract that's like a try and prove it, you proved it. Not just, okay, we're going to extend you, we're going to give you a good contract, but we're going to make you the highest paid quarterback of all time. Well, you guys might be surprised, but I obviously always believe obviously. this was going to happen. If you oh, look yes. back at my tweets mm -hmm. and blur your eyes a little bit, that's what you see. Yep. Yeah, it's it's uh incredible with, confidence. Now, now both of these four year two hundred and twelve for Tua, four year two hundred and twenty for Jordan Love. Uh, you know, it's a, a lot's made because Jordan Love's is the the highest ever, and but Tua's right there with him. These are both gargantuan contracts. Same with the Trevor Lawrence contract that he just got. Which one is the best? Which one is the worst of the deals? Yeah, for the franchises. I'm, which one I'm, would you not have done? If I had to choose one, it was Tua's deal. I would I would rather have done Jordan Love's deal. Yeah, I mean, because you, you're you locking up a player that I think showed enough as fast as you can, and every every latest deal will be the highest deal ever, mm -hmm. forever. That's one of my least favorite lines in all of this. In fact, I heard Patrick Mahomes talking about these deals because, of course, the media goes straight to him and says, your average value per year now is X, right. and these guys are at X. And his response just, it's why he's a three-time champion. He's just like, I'm doing great for my family. You know, I'm not concerned about the average annual price. I signed a good deal when I signed it. I It lets me put good players around me. 
Yeah. It was just so incredible. But every new deal. Remember when Joe Flacco was the highest paid quarterback in the history of football? Uh-huh. I mean, this will happen over and over again. It's not the deal – numbers the headlines today it's whether you did what you're supposed to do do you want to be in the Dak Prescott range where you just have this hanging over your team every time there's a deal about to be made or do you just want to do the right thing like they did with Jordan Love lock him up you know your next four years and beyond and move forward I, I agree whatever quarterback you sign to a long-term deal is going to have a monstrous contract it's always going to be up near the top whenever they sign but I guess my question but was: But the two deal, the two deal is, is Tua worth it? Is Tua a quarterback that you want to be tied to for the next half a decade? It is not very different than paying Trevor Lawrence. Tua, I think, to all of us, feels like he's benefited tremendously from Mike McDaniel and the system. Sure, but what else is he supposed to do? So he earned it in the context of doing what you're supposed to do on that team when you're supposed to do it. He has a concussion history; those things are going to linger. But, I mean, he should be great for the next few years. What are we going to do, not pay him, Mike? No, you, you either have a guy who can win games for you or you're just stuck forever and ever being or a you losing got Derek franchise. Carr. Yeah, you have Derek Carr. You have maybe Daniel Jones. I mean, there's just – it's – Did it, you see there was $1.2 million worth of quarterback contracts given out? $1.2 billion, sorry. $1.2 billion worth of contracts given out this offseason to quarterbacks that have zero rings combined? Yeah. You are paying to play the game. What else are you going to do? Well, when you've got Mahomes kind of hoarding them rings, it's it's tough for other people to, you know, have them. Stafford got a little extra money. Yep. Finalized the new contract. Nick Chubb, unlikely to be ready for the start of the season. Jerome Ford expected to be the lead back. That's the report we got. Pierre Strong Jr., the backup. That part is... That's interesting. Pierre Strong got way more playing time last year than anybody wanted to see happen. Right. And then Deonta Foreman to fill short yardage roles. So there's a, you know, you can take that news any way you want. I have been more on the hesitant around Ford's side because I am afraid of him losing short yardage. But expected I am, to be lead back, you can take that positively. Yeah, I I, I take it positively. I, I see Jerome Ford as a, a really good value to start the season. Losing that um, goal line job, that's fine. Did the same thing last year. Kareem Hunt had, what was it, like nine rushing touches? Kareem Hunt was the goal line back. So they're bringing in what I think is a probably a downgrade from Kareem Hunt around the goal line and Deontay Foreman. And Ford has another year in the system. He's the veteran. He proved himself last year. So I do think that this is positive news for Jerome Ford. This is not a guy you're going to draft who's going to go out there and give you top five weeks. He's not going to go out there and dominate. But he is a guy that's going to go out there and give you top 24 weeks almost every week until, you know, maybe until Chubb is, is fully back and healthy and integrated. Well, and you have, yeah, you have the the timeline of Nick Chubb, okay, he's actually back. How long until Nick Chubb is back to being the starter who's getting, like, the bulk of the work? That's a whole extended Here, period of time, yeah, You too. saw it with Jonathan so, Taylor last year, right? Jonathan right. Taylor comes back, and they don't just go straight to it. Zach Moss right. still had a, a couple of weeks where he was more the I lead have dog. A harder, a, this one's tougher for me. Okay? okay, And it's not because any of the things you're saying are incorrect. It's because of the nature of building a team. And so if I'm going to build a team where I probably have drafted my starting running backs already and I get Jerome Ford, and Jerome Ford's expiration date is coming when I'm not starting him, it makes him a tough pick for me. That's my hesitation around Jerome Ford. 100%. Does that make sense? That, that, is, that is well said and it's accurate. That Jerome Ford – is like a zero RB darling. It, it's one. Sure. It, it's it's one of those builds where RB forty one right now. Yeah, if you are punting running back to start your draft and you're wanting to go a little bit more, you know, anti fragile, get wide receivers, maybe go after what the onesie that? positions. Sorry, that is round eleven. Yeah, okay. like, so like this, your this shot is, on somebody else there is not a no uh, on high upside. It's shot. very very poor. And on top of that, look, unfortunately, we know that in rounds one through five. There's going to be a lot of players that it just doesn't work. Guys get, get hurt. hurt yeah. Guys get hurt. Guys aren't what you hoped that they would become. And like to me, even with the expiration that will certainly happen to Jerome Ford, it's, well, what if the running back I took in round four doesn't work out? And all of a sudden now Jerome Ford is my RB2 and he was free. All right. I want to talk about quite a bit um, of the news still. So we'll take a quick break and come back with some news from Chargers camp.
All right, turning towards the Chargers training camp discussion. Uh, J.K. Dobbins been full participant in training camp. Now, did you see the calf? The picture of yeah. J.K. one leg. Yeah. In the most literal sense, like the calf <laughs> of one of his legs is not as developed. Yeah, I'm gonna guess that's the leg with the Achilles problem. You're wrong. Oof. No. <laughs> you're no. Right. Um. Yeah. It. it I mean, uh, one photograph. I'm not gonna go crazy about obviously he's out there playing practicing um this is good news for jk dobbins i'm not going to overreact to the photograph and besides he has had successful times he, he's he's had successful times on the field where he's been jk one leg right yeah i mean he's still recovering from the achilles so it's are you fully out like you're betting out 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 I, against him Embed yes. yes, my bet is both of you is yeah. out on Dobbins. Yeah, it's not it's not that Dobbins can't come back. It's like Dobbins to me can come back and be Deonta Foreman for a team. Right? Where where you're not gonna you didn't sign him probably to take over everything. No. Because those his, days are gone. Like he is def he is the presumed number two running back behind Gus Edwards, but the the contract is in such a way that we get into August, this team sees what JK is and, and evaluate the running back, uh, the room and be like, this isn't going to work. And we have to go like they cut him and they go pick up Dalvin cook or something. Yeah. I, I I'll talk about players you want to see on a preseason field. Right. Like I would love to see this. I reserve the right to change my opinion. If that I cap gets a right. little bit bigger, um, bad news for you two gentlemen, uh, from the nineties, uh, Jarrett Patterson running ahead of six round rookie Kamani Vidal. Uh, Vidal, you, you address him properly. Thank you. Sorry, Kamani Vidal Sassoon. Thank you. Um, <laughs> which earlier you mentioned, <laughs> Audric Estime Lauder. Yes. And then we do have Adonai Paul Mitchell. That's right. So first, and of course, skirt the rules a little bit. But and then right. what was what was the last one that I heard? Um, uh, was, oh, Drake Maybelline. Yeah. <laughs> so we do have the full allotment of, and I have to explain this because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that earlier in the show, if you're under 35 years old. You thought that we mispronounced the last name of Audrey Guestimate when, in fact, we were making a really creative and deft 1995 salon joke. Yeah. I mean, it was a professional joke here. Yeah. Um, I'm happy that you got to explain it. You always want to explain jokes. Yes, you need so, to sometimes. You know, thanks for thanks for tuning in. It, I will say this. Um, first of all, Kamini Vidal Sassoon as a That's round the best one though as a as a round six pick, um, you have to bet against these late day three guys. I know that the draft season comes around and everyone gets all excited, but I'm just historically like they don't work. They just the they do work sometimes. An undrafted guy becomes Austin Eckler, but the majority, and I'm talking like ninety percent of the time, it doesn't work. So. But on the flip side, Jarrett Patterson, that's a name from the past that yeah, I have. Yeah, it is. Like, did he even – was he in the NFL last year? You are remembering Jarrett Patterson from your fantasy football championship game Back two in, years on ago. on the Washington football team, it, I believe. Same team he was still on last year. We had 17 total attempts. Okay. But, um, but yeah, right now, the Gus bus, JK one leg, the end. So, I can tell you – so, last year, Jay, of okay. the – uh, of the top ten, let's see. We had five first rounders, four second rounders, thir uh, one third rounder, and then there was one fifth and one undrafted of the top ten. I mean, it's just like the the numbers are so against anybody actually doing anything. Lad McConkey, Josh Palmer, DJ Chark, those players have comprised three wide receiver sets in two minute drill. And wait, read that again. Lad McConkey. Okay, we're talking about the Chargers, right? Josh Palmer and yeah. DJ Chark. Wait, don't they have a first round wide receiver? Have comprised three wide receiver sets and two minute drill and move the ball periods of the first two days of Chargers camp. I feel like you're forgetting someone. I don't think we are. Uh, oh, Quinton Johnston, who has been left out of that. Uh Harbaugh did talk him up saying he's been uh wonderful and gets a bad rap and it then a video like, it feels like a lie. Oh, for sure. And then a video comes out of what him. What else are you supposed to say? Just dropping a warm up over the shoulder, track the ball. Thing, you know, doing a cue. Well, he didn't drop it. He didn't get to the ball. It, it touched his hands. Lad McConkey, oh, Josh yeah, Palmer, okay. DJ DJ Chark. Who do you want to take the chance on? I mean, I, I've said it all off season. Lad McConkey is a player I believe in. Um, ironically, when you talk about the late breakout ages, when for Xavier Xavier Leggett earlier, 
He had a late one. Lad McConkey technically didn't have one. He didn't get there. But when you watch the film, the dude balls. He is absolutely outstanding. He is a great slot receiver. He will have space. He will be where Justin Herbert wants him to be. And I think he'll be the number one wide receiver for this team. So that's where I'm taking my Correction shot. on Jarrett Patterson. That was 2022 when he had 16 carries. Yeah, that's what I was wondering like last year. So what, 17 carries he, between the last two years. Was he in the, <laughs> was he in the NFL? Like I, no, I he didn't play. It. I, I hadn't I heard his know. name in forever. And when practice I, squad. When I saw this, I was like, wait, he's back. Jared he's practice Patterson. squad. And, and look, the reports that I have at least heard on Jared Patterson are far more of a he can he'll he'll be back on the Chargers practice squad. Chase and for now. Brown. Chase Brown continues to This take one is significant. This, a, this one yeah, this one has changed my rankings. My Bengals two. running back Chase Brown continues to take the majority of reps at running back with the first team offense at training camp. The day before, the director of player personnel Duke Tobin told reporters that Brown would have the opportunity to be the guy or the second guy or, or in tandem with Zach Moss, but the fact that this is an open competition with yeah. opportunities to be the guy mm -hmm. is one of the reasons why there's this, like, I think we all wanted to like Zach Moss all off season, but Mike kept saying the same thing, which is like, when you stack up all of the historical data on players like Zach Moss, it almost never works out like this, where you just get a clean run at a starting opportunity even though he had the success last year. Now it looks like it's a really open competition. There's obviously some loyalty to Chase Brown having an opportunity there that they feel good about. So, and, thoughts? And, yeah, so I have reacted to this. It did change my rankings as as well, Mike. I've, I've moved them closer because originally I thought it was, you know, Zach Moss was given the money. He was brought in. He's a perfect fit for this system. He's a veteran. And so I certainly had him as the well ahead of the timeshare role. I've moved them closer to each other. But I would caution people to not overreact yet. It is so early in training camp. If you want to give all these guys an opportunity to be the guy or the second guy or in tandem, then you the, a report could come out next week saying, now Zach Moss is taking all the first team reps. You know, they're giving these guys opportunities. So just this is the first major beat of a drum that you want to, ha you want to pay attention to. Does it continue? Because if it does and it started early, that's great yeah. news uh, for Chase Brown. When there's actual real life – defenders blitzing off the edge we'll see if it's chase brown or zach moss all right and then the eagles offensive coordinator kellen moore on his plans to move aj brown and Devonte smith around said i think those guys are going to move around the game uh, throughout the game throughout each and every week uh we know that the offense is changing in a dramatic fashion in philadelphia my biggest curiosity has been like you have a lot of enthusiasm around motion which the Eagles didn't run much of over the last few years, which was a strange thing for them to do, right? Like we all have a great reverence for Shane Steichen and his innovation in Indianapolis, but he was also the offensive coordinator for this team two years ago. They didn't move a lot. Now they're going to move guys around a lot. I'm curious what's going to give. Is it going to be, you know, fewer, um, you know, option runs? What, RPOs? Yeah, RPOs for Jalen Hurts because he's not in the – in the um, Shotgun is often. Is it going to be that goal line? We don't have Kelsey, so we don't get the put tush push. Like I don't expect every single player on the entire Philadelphia Eagles offense to have an upshot just because of change. So I'm really just curious broadly who benefits, who suffers under a a transition this dramatic. Yeah. So when you're when you're looking at that, and I think everything you said there was 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 well laid out. It's not necessarily great for everyone. What I want to do, what I want to bet on, is talent. I go, okay, th th this system's going to change. Who's it going to be? Who's going to succeed? We do know that motion and uh, th these pre-snap movements, things like that, they put players in better s positions to succeed. It makes things a little bit easier for the passing game. So when I look at A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith specifically, those two wide receivers are awesome. They are human beings that are great wide receivers. A.J. Brown is, uh, fortunately for him, an athletic a tank. freak, a tank, uh, unfortunately for Devontae Smith, he is not, which is why he's the clear number two here. But if you just talk about wide receiver talent, there's no question that these guys are elite, awesome, world-class wide receivers. So if you would put them in positions that open things up for them to be a little bit easier, maybe catch the ball in stride, maybe create more space, I, I'm betting on both of those players specifically. I don't think it goes to the entire offense. I'm not betting on Dallas Goddard. 
I'm not, you know, just across the board saying I've got to get every eagle I can, but I think it will be uh, a significant year for both A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. It will be a big adjustment, too, for Jalen Hurts, who struggled with the passing game over the back half of the year last year. Um, that'll be something to watch, too. Adjusting to a new offense is not always smooth, or maybe it takes some time. Dude, Does I, it start worse it, than it finishes? You know, those are questions. I feel like he has had a new offensive coordinator for about 20 years, like back to college, like every year was, you know, he's transferring schools that he gets here and then it, it failure causes a change. Then success causes a change. Then it's like every year he's got a new system. He's, I don't know what will happen if he has two years of the same system. Yeah. I mean, they were, we'll never know. They were obviously a really good offense uh, until the tumult of the end of the year. Yeah, the second half of last year, I don't know if it was just teams figured out the very vanilla offense or something was, you know, broken in the in the actual play and talent, but I I lean more the latter. Ricky Pearsall is back from the active NFI list. Rookie first round wide receiver for the 49ers. And do we have any uh all the lock-ins or the lock-ins, the uh I was just hold -ins still happening, Mike? We saw no Jamar Chase last we heard practicing we have no uh cd lamb we have no brandon Ayuk. what what's with the cowboys oh that uh, is a it, look i mean there was a a clip that kind of went viral there about jerry jones talking about how he's going to time up the market perfectly hmm. and comparing it to a to a read option of you got to wait until the very last second sometimes to know if the timing is perfect and the timing is not perfect. It is, in fact, terrible for them. They have they have botched this with every. I mean, especially like those two quarterback contracts. You tell me, Dak in Dak's representation is not like that's nice. That's <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, this is not better for the Cowboys. That's nice. You tell me, uh, Jordan Love just got two twenty. Like, they get paid every two weeks, so these checks are just smaller <laughs> leading up to the. So it's so weird. Here's man. A, a cool stat for all the Cowboy faithful the cowboy fans to just get excited about this upcoming season right now their free agent guaranteed money they've spent this off season is nine million dollars so that's all they've that's all they've doled out that's pretty pretty well, gonna need, pretty powerful off season they need to pay probably a little bit more than that to lock up cd lamb and michael parsons and Dak prescott yeah and trey lance looks terrible in camp so no he's not gonna oh work he's not gonna work he's, he's running, not gonna work he's running as the third string i saw video for now i for, saw video for now for, guys yeah. i well, saw video and look it, you should have seen those plays and then like walked off the field and, and handed a contract to dak yeah um also it reminds trey lance reminds me of uh mike what was that quote uh that you saw from uh sam oh. howell oh and that was oh that was spectacular it was <laughs> fantastic He's uh, had a there was a report from the seattle seahawks that sam howell is three days into an almost alarmingly inaccurate camp. <laughs> I mean, like you've crossed the line <laughs> to from inaccurate to alarmingly inaccurate. Almost, almost, almost. alarmingly inaccurate. It's well, like we're not there yet, but a couple more days, so we're, we'll be alarmed. We're almost alarmingly <laughs> inaccurate. These the three beat days. reporters, oh, please give us stuff like that. Like oh, if you're going to share your opinion, is, make it entertaining. It is that is killer alliteration. Excellent oh, work up there. Man. Yeah, I Cowboys got to figure this out because we would like to see um, we'd like to see those players under contract. Yes, we would. Mike still has zero of his three <laughs> dynasty <laughs> wide receiver because you won't trade them to me. I won't. I mean, no. I can do this for you. <laughs> don't, don't get paid, guys. They're gonna get paid. All right, we have a ton of great questions to answer as we get ready for 2024. Quick break, and we're back with the mailbag. Bag. Bag. Yeah. All right. It is time to jump into the mailbag. Excited. These questions really matter. The year is uh, on the way. And if you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. We are here to help. Click the submit a question button or dial our voicemail hotline 302-464-TFFB. I got a question. 
before we What's kick that? it off, my own question: like, where where is the third? <laughs> where is the third deucer? Oh, yes. Where yes. is? Where is Matt? Oh, no. Where is the Falcon? No. You did it. You brought it up on the show. Where is the third guy? I don't know. I no. see an empty chair. In let, no. me count, let me count. That man has a family. Al Borland, help, say something. I'm here. All right. And then we've got Papa Josh. Oh, no. Here. Papa Josh. And then uh, the Falcon. Yeah, say something, Hold Falcon. Hold on. Let's listen. Uh, he's, he's not there. He's no, missing. I don't, I'm not hearing anything. Well, my um, under, my understanding, okay, is that he had lunch <laughs> and coffee. <laughs> and it was possible. Oh, no. It was possible he was brewing a little something. I just haven't seen him in a while. Oh, man. And I was just kind of. We have a note in our chat that he's, he said, I hit both bathrooms out of spite. <laughs> so he's just. <laughs> So the, he's just desecrating the building right now. The Falcon is fully. He's, he's questionable to return. Yeah, I mean. We got three bathrooms, Falcon. You, you got some work still to do. Oh, my gosh. Well, okay. Question answered. <laughs> Let's jump into the voicemail questions. Here's one oh, from Ryan. Man. Hey, ballers. This is Ryan Amarillo. I had a quick question on draft preparation in a keeper league. Um, how do you, any tips or tricks to prepare when the typical ADP doesn't apply? Thanks. So, um, I'll, I'll lay some groundwork for, so the, this is a for keep, the answer. So keeper question when they're talking about when ADP just doesn't apply? Just, yeah, draft tips when the ADP doesn't apply to your league, which ADP is average draft position. Uh, when we refer to it on the show, uh, sometimes we might be referring to sleepers, ADP, which is the average place players are going in a mock draft on sleeper on Yahoo, on ESPN. Uh, sometimes we refer to underdog, which is best ball and their ADP. There's all different platforms have different ADPs. They are always changing. And I do worry sometimes I'll be honest that because it's the common way we compare value that it can seem so universal that it's always going to apply to your league. And, and so this question is so smart by Ryan to say, Look, I'm not going to bank that everybody in my league has the exact same viewpoint on every player. So what are some draft tips when there is variance? When there is, you know, I think the one that we see a lot of is if you draft at a hometown, you know, hometown players might go in a different place than they do on the ESPN ADP, for example. Well, and I, I think if you even take our league of record, now I, I would recommend this for all leagues out there that are serious, not like the, you know, if, if you're at your office league and you got half the people that don't know what they're doing, whatever, make sure ADP's on to help them to not just destroy themselves and make it an easy victory. But um, like in our league, you know, we, we don't have the ADP sorted when, when you're drafting. You come in with your list. There is no ADP. So I think he's probably talking to a, a league that there is no predetermined, you know, next guy up in the queue in my league, I know you could do that on the sleeper platform where you just turn it off and it's alphabetical. And so average draft position at that point will still be a guide of mm -hmm. where most people in the world are seeing them, but it will be much, much looser because there is something that happens when the when the ADP is on where people are just like, I got to choose from one of these three guys at the top. Don't, don't be that person. But as far as tips when that doesn't apply, first of all, you have to come in with your own rankings. You have to come in. You know, we we we've got we've got the tiered rankings in the ultimate and draft kit. Cheat sheet creator. Yeah, we've got the cheat sheet creator, so you could make your notes. You can star your players. You can move them around, but you have to come in prepared with some idea of the order of players you like and you want to a draft without. ADP. I mean, our league of record does not use an ADP. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, just like you said. Yeah, just like just you like heard. you said. Just like just I like totally you totally heard it. Yeah. So nice, you said it twice. But because of that. Everybody has to come in with their own plan, and there's a, a level up that happens in terms of my plan versus your plan versus Mike's plan and where we think players are going to pull the trigger and how long you think you can wait, and, and, and it's a guide. I would say that the the it's always important. Like our league of record does not have an ADP. What? <laughs> we don't? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, breaking news. That's crazy. Um, I, I will say this. The – Drafting by tiers, which we, we explained on a, on a recent episode, um, is always important. But if you are without ADP, it, I mean, that is the way to win a league, is to make sure that you've got your players bucketed together, where it's like, because you can you can end up without ADP gaining extreme value later if you, if you pay attention to guys that are in the same tier of quality. Do you have anything 
to add there, Mike? I do not. Preferably hand out ADP sheets to your league mates and tell them to believe them and make them I've, to your advantage. I've never gone with that one, but it yeah. could work. Yeah, you could just print out a, a bad one and like leave, it on, the, leave it on the ground somewhere. Backwards ADP? Whoa. All right. I think they'd figure it out eventually. I think Maybe. they'd figure it out right off the bat. Uh, Denver B91 on Instagram writes in and says, Bijan 101 and then like a thousand exclamation or uh, question marks. Yes, you can take Bijan 101. Yes, you can. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've said this a handful of times. If every running back plays 17 games, I think Bijan's the only guy that could outscore Christian McCaffrey this season. And I think Brees – I put Brees into that bucket too, but it'd be better to take Bijan on 102 or 103 if you can make a trade. Sure, sure. It, if if you can trade, if that's successful to you. And it's – I think that the larger question to me of this is just – we all have Christian McCaffrey number one. Do we still have McCaffrey number one? I do. Oh, yeah. As a group, yep. it's look. If you have convictions and you have a process that has led you to believe that I think Bijan, the I like, I have a higher probability of Bijan finishing as the number one player overall over Christian McCaffrey. And you have the one hundred one, and it's the only place you can get him because if you have the one hundred one, you will not get Bijan Robinson in. Anything. It could be a, a linear draft. It could be a snake draft. You won't get him with your second pick. If your process is, I like Bijan more than the other guys, it's it's not egregious. Be bold. Take him up front. The decision you make there simply comes with the fact you need to live with the results. Right? Because if you take CMC where you're supposed to at 101 and he doesn't work out, at least you, you did, did what you were supposed to do. <laughs> Well, now, it, I'm just saying psychologically, if you take, but if you take Bijan at 101 and Christian McCaffrey laps the field again, you will feel bad. You will, but that doesn't mean it's the wrong decision. No, because it's very rare for players to repeat. I mean, yeah. if whether by injury or circumstance, or you know, you could you could have a better season from CMC, but Bijan could be better over the last eight games, so he's better for fantasy playoffs. Like that's an outcome people don't consider very often. You just look at the oh, cool, I've got the number two running back, but. He was number one over the last five weeks. I I would also throw I'll throw this out there to anyone that is considering the Bijan over like I would take Christian McCaffrey that would be what I do, but if these guys that you take in the first are epic failures, it is because of injury. Like that that's that's what's going to happen. Like you, the, your failures are because of injury, and you can't predict that. But there are certain markers, certain things. Obviously, age is a big one. So if you say, well, hey, I would rather have the two hundred and fifteen pound twenty two year old who is close enough rather than the 28-year-old who's 209 pounds, okay, that's that's a that's a fair tiebreaker. Yeah. Yeah. Just trying. No, I, I mean, you're trying. I mean, that – I mean, you said epic you, failure, but you could have like a normal – What's happening here? You could a have a normal, I don't know about? No, you could have a normal failure. Like, Bijan could just be okay. Bijan could be the RB7. Bijan could be the RB11. Sure. Okay. Like, those things could happen without injury. Yeah, just but, because we haven't had the ped- we haven't had the years of Christian McCaffrey lapping the field that, for that, Bijan. That's why Christian McCaffrey is going number one. Because how Christian McCaffrey finishes as the running back seven is he missed several games. That is, you you got it. There is no world it. where he plays a full season and finishes RB seven. There is yeah. a world where yeah. Bijan fi- plays the whole season and finishes RB seven. There you go. Makes sense. Uh, all right, Mike. This question is from. Instagram, Joe Mixon or Mike Evans in a full PPR keeper league? I would take Mike Evans. The I have my my biggest question for Joe Mixon is related to pass catching. And look, we we've seen quarterbacks change their play style once they have a a player at the running back position who actually is really good at catching passes. The easiest one to talk is Cam Newton. Never checked it down. Then he got Christian McCaffrey, and Christian McCaffrey's catching seventy plus passes a year in Carolina. So, but last year C.J. Stroud was just—he didn't throw to the running back position as chicken or egg. But then on top of that, you, that very fair question is: they've also added Stephon Diggs into this offense. So it's you have three great pass catching wide receivers. Is Joe Mixon going to see a huge uptick in reception? So you're Evans. Jason, are you Evans? I am. Well, if this is at ADP, because Mixon is going a, a full round later, I would actually be on the Joe Mixon side here. You, I know I that, if I have to give up my pick, 
Like if you're saying, okay, I take Evans for a third or I take Mixon for a fourth, then it becomes harder. Yeah, I, I take a little bit of contention. And obviously you talked about how Mixon coming in might allow for more receptions. But even Singletary, you know, at the end of the year, the last seven games played where he was the guy, he was on pace for 55 targets. That's not like a, a ton, but that's a – that is – that's how many just, it is. Just saying, on the on the year, they were thirtieth in NF, the NFL targets to the running back. Well, yeah, because the first half percentage. of the year they were trying to so do if the you're Damian swapped, Pierce thing. If you're looking at it with the average draft position, you guys are both on the mixing side. I I am. I think I'm still going to go Evans and Falcon. Oh my! Oh, Lord. did he find the third bathroom? Okay. No good, more good, French dips, buddy. Good thought. Good thought. French um, dumps. French dumps. <laughs> Did switch. <laughs> oh, he does not get paid enough to undergo what he's oh, undergone. And um, never will. Oh, the de Deucer's Alley is just cracking yeah. up over there. Because yeah, um, they, they know. <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, if, as long as the heat's on him. Yeah, they were good. <laughs> they love not getting dunked on. As long as the heat's on. I'm um, still not here. All right. Heat doesn't turn off. It just changes where it's pointed. Oh, yeah, which burner's on. <laughs> <laughs> the oven's always on. It's just which burner. He can't be here, Andy. He had lunch today and coffee. <laughs> so, like, eventually, <laughs> you just can't work. Eventually, you need to. This poor guy. Oh, I love you, you. You brought this up. I did you nothing. You brought this up. No, I, I did I'm everything. I'm just going to pile on when it's here. Um, Instagram. Hamish Dow says, "Why don't you guys? Uh, why don't you record your league of record draft?" Oh, because you will be so bored. <laughs> it's kind of true. We you will be so bored. We've recorded parts of it before. We have done we like have a, a little, highlight video on a YouTube. A little highlight video when Traeger came out and helped sponsor, and 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 it was pretty cool to see some. We, we'll throw some pictures and maybe a little clip or two on on socials. But really, like you know, it's a long draft. We, you know, we, we we're not we're not in a. Um, we're not in the sleeper ESPN platform drafting in there. We're, this is a an offline, local, you know, everyone's here. We've we got a lot of pages that have been printed. Um, and by that, I mean Andy does. Uh, and then all of us have iPads. But, it, you know, it's a slow, arduous um, yeah, draft that's a lot of fun if you're in it. And I don't think it's a good viewing experience. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, feel like most people are going to be like, oh, just record it. You think they'd want to see it? Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I don't us, think I don't us. think telling them it's boring is going to make sense. I'd say give us our one day. Give us our one day, not under the microscope. I want to be under the microscope if they'd enjoy it. I just I don't. Want it would to bore be them. so boring, man. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Uh, I lead that way. All right. Um, this question comes in from X. In Dynasty, how do you manage your aging out veterans? <laughs> what? Uh, what are those? Uh, what are you willing to take and trade? For example, I have Keenan Allen. When do you think you will have the most trade value? I actually have a great tip for this. Okay, well, when do I think Keenan Allen will have the most trade value? I traded him this offseason. A season. year ago? No, I, nope. I traded him this offseason. I did that. You don't trade young. You don't trade old for young. That doesn't work. That's a bad philosophy. You'll never get that. You trade old for old. That's what you do. That's how your team has stayed so old? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you trade you, old you for old. You just go like one year? Yes. <laughs> I traded Keenan Allen and I got Amari Cooper. Okay. That was my trade. Yeah, that's great. Amari Cooper is younger. Amari Cooper is not quite as aged, but he's not young, and he's looked at as an older player. You will never successfully convince somebody to take a – you will rarely successfully yes. convince somebody to take an older, proficient, great – you know, like last year, Keenan Allen still would have been a hard player to trade while he was doing well. Yeah. But I could trade him – for Amari Cooper this offseason, that's what I did. I, I will say that you are you are right when you're talking about examples that have already aged past the age cliff where they've lost a ton of value. Eventually, you're not going to be able to trade old for young. However, I think my answer to this question, which you have personally done, I have done many, many times in our league. I think it's the our, one of the one of the most important dynasty tips is knowing where that age range is and when they are still holding really, really good value. So, for instance. At the end of this season, when A.J. Brown, I believe, has an awesome season, he is not seen as an old, aging right. player. He's going to be a top – if he has a great season, he's going to be a top five, six dynasty wide receiver. That is when I will trade him. He'll be 28 years old. He'll still have plenty of real legitimate value to offer someone, and I'll trade them for a young, 
up and coming player and a first. That's what I look for. Um, you know, we, we we've done that several times across many leagues. So I, I think I think both are good ideas. If you want to get out a year early, you can get a lot for your future. If you wait and you want the production that comes from that, you know, age twenty nine year old yeah, yeah. awesome mm -hmm. season, then trade old for a little less old. That's that's not bad. Old for a little less old. Yeah, that's. I think it's a good way to go about it. That way you can keep your team as old as mine. You have done an excellent job at that. I, I posted the fact that I had gotten all my old guys' contracts this uh, offseason. It's season, unbelievable. Right? It's Which is, unbelievable. I mean, it's almost everybody. It is is literally every single p person on your starting roster, other than your quarterback who's already locked in oh, forever, and that doesn't count. McCaffrey, uh, Stevenson, Evans, Cooper, Kelsey, Mostert, Lockett. Yeah, so you, there's just Al Alvin Kamara. That's it. Yeah, and, and I – I posted that, and then I got a lot of snapback. Ah, the, your team's so old. Your team's so old. What are you? Your team's gonna die. His team has been old for twenty years. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like I did snap back, and then I deleted it. But I like, I was like, dude, I've won two titles with this team. I outscored everybody Almost in the league by five hundred point, four hundred and fifty points last year. They, I'm not saying you you don't want to be strategic. I just moved Josh Allen for Kyler in a first, right? That works towards my future in some fashion. But I am not so obsessed with looking at my rookies in a mirror and being like, oh, someday. Like, I like winning now. Yes. They're, so I it will represent all the old guys. There could come a point where the creditors come to collect on your team, but they have not done it thus far. Oh, and, and yeah, they, they could. But I, you know, I live in denial. Like uh, Mike with, and I's champ, champ, champ yeah. team. We we did Pat. We, you guys have been living that life, and how does oh, it feel? It feels awful. We, we <laughs> <laughs> it feels awful because we did we did something different. How many championships did you win in a row? Three. Three. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that, I, did that feel awful or awesome? That felt awesome, okay. and that caused us to continue. Just we said we're gonna ride this <laughs> yeah. thing Thelma and Louise style until it's over. Yeah. And buddy. right now, right now, I'm looking at our roster. It's it's fantastic. It is fantastically old, though, and the creditors will come and call it. And we're gonna have to, we're gonna have nothing to offer anyone. <laughs> we're not even gonna be able to rebuild. We'll just have to just delete the league. <laughs> um, That's the pro tip. Yeah, start a new league. <laughs> Don't do that, Dynasty people. Like in in light of recent events happening to my team, we are retiring. We're, we're gonna re-roll. Yeah. We're gonna do another start. startup draft in August. Hope you're there. All right, that is going to do it for today's episode of the show on Thursday. Guess what? What? <laughs> Wait, was, was that Papa Josh? Oh it wasn't Matt. Wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Where is Matt? Oh, there, there he is. Um, oh, the falcon is flying low. <laughs> it's not every day that Papa Josh jumps in with the what, but Ice and Fire episode on Thursday. What? Ice and Fire. For real? Yeah. Ice and fire on what? Thursday, mid-round madness on Friday, and then five shows a week Oh, brother, is here. So uh, I'm sure we'll have a lot more news to talk about. Matt will be back, maybe, and um, hopefully he's still here, <laughs> like employed. Don't quit, Matt. We love you. <laughs> we love you. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.